that's why they're not going to burn them. Because they may be credible about something else later on. But they're just using the media to try to harm Trump. And they're all getting egg on their face. That's why they're not going to burn them. Well, I think that you, you, you could potentially be right there. I think even more scary is that they're high-level intelligence officials that are just, uh, you know, using misinformation and disinformation techniques, um, you know, because everybody knows who cares about the retraction that they'll a news agency will give out later on. It's the initial sting. And if you keep – if you just keep on beating a drum, even if it's just false – falsehoods against a guy like Donald Trump, that just becomes what people know. And, and so, they, you know, it's psychological operations. I really hope it's not, you know, high-ranking intelligence officials that are doing that. But I don't trust – the intelligence community anymore and i don't trust the fbi anymore over the way they've been conducting themselves over the last year or so so i i really hope i don't want to sound like alex jones but but i'm, I'm getting nervous that there is a deep state and there is a there are career bureaucrats that, that that would do something like this and are doing stuff like this in this particular case russ i don't know if it's that deep state it could well be and I'm, i'll give absolutely i can say it's plausible and your points are absolutely valid but when we're talking about a specific email that pops up who is going through all these emails right now the house intelligence yeah, committee yeah the house intelligence supposedly. committee and as things are cropping up who's going through those high level democrat staffers and uh you know for those democratic congressmen on that committee you know the, what's his name on there i forget his name that's the the uh ranking member with devin nunez but you see him on the media yeah, well, i want to strangle him Schiff, Schiff. yeah half of those democrats are 95 years old though so it's definitely their staffers which oh, yeah, is what absolutely. i'm talking about you know the deep state includes congressional staffers because as as we know from working uh, you know small capacity politics locally here in new york new york city new york state the, the staffers congressmen and women and state senators they come and go but the staffers are the swamp I mean, and I feel bad to say because some of my friends are some of those swamp uh, people, but but they're the swamp. A new congressman comes in, he hires half the staff from the last guy. It, 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 there's they're swamp. Oh, absolutely, I, I totally. And those agree could be the people, Gene, that are dro- dropping these emails and stuff like that. They're they're the, the deep state. It's scary. I tend to agree with you, pal. It could be any one of those rascals out there. Meanwhile, we're at halftime here on the show. Just about at halftime, maybe a little over. I'm Gene, he's Russ. We are Behind Enemy Lines Radio. Thanks for tuning in to us. But while you're tuned in, check us out at www.behindenemylinesradio.us. Check us out on the Facebooks and the Twitters at BEL underscore radio. And if you miss any part of the show, which we normally do live, which we're going to start doing live again, I think, soon, pal. We're trying to work on the video. We're going to get live broadcast back up again. Uh, you can also check us out at WJHC 107.5 FM in Jasper, Florida, WDDQ 92.1, Talk 92.1 in Adele, Georgia, and WLBB News Talk 1330 AM in Carrollton, Georgia, all part of the Talk America Radio Network. You can also check us out at KLRN Radio Online. Uh, you can check us out at Sackheads Media and uh, High Plains Talk Radio, which I believe is now called Lone Star News. With good job on them. And also Lanterns Radio at lanterns.buzz. But if you missed any of the live broadcasts, you can also check us out at iTunes, Spreaker, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podbay, Player FM, Google Play Music, Auto Radio, and of course, iHeartRadio. We love iHeartRadio because they love us too. And a whole bunch of other outlets out there where finer podcast. You want to talk about some real so we heart, stuff? So We Heart, I Heart Radio. Yes, We Heart, I Heart. Absolutely. Uh, you want to talk about some real news now, Russ? I mean, we talked about I'm... all Palace Intrigue and Innuendo and all that stuff. I want to talk about something that's going to affect us directly. Oh, and that's Buffoon of the Year, right? No, I'm kidding. Well, we'll do that later. We'll do that later. Touch on that. But we will. I'm talking about this tax bill working its way through Congress. Oh, absolutely. I, I know this. Finally, some real substantive public policy. I know. I, mean, I, I know your it Bitcoin won't be affected by this, most likely. Hey, but listen, I just, for those the, of us still dealing in the while dollar. While this show has been taping, I've earned another dollar. Don't hate on my Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this tax bill, Russ. Armageddon, right. says Nancy Pelosi. Well, well, Armageddon. I mean, speaking Armageddon, of non credible. <laughs> the worst bill in the history of Congress. And this is the Congress that has passed in the that has uh in the past, you know, passed such laws as the Fugitive Slave Act, the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, the Alien Sedition Acts, uh Prohibition, but this this tax bill is worse than all that. Armageddon Gene. Armageddon. Armageddon. Hmm. Yes. You know why it's Armageddon, Russ? Because it's going to grow the debt. Democrats, apparently, after eight years of not caring about the debt, they finally care about the debt. No. And be- go ahead. How, how can they even get away with saying that? That just shows you how uneducated the American voter is because they're willing to roll the dice with saying something like that because they know nobody pays attention. 
Anybody who even somewhat casually pays attention knows that's ridiculous for Nancy Pelosi to even utter something so stupid. Well, the fact that they're concerned about a possible one trillion uh, dollar growth in national debt by twenty—I'm sorry, no, thirty-one trillion uh, growth increase in national debt by twenty twenty-eight. Because we all know everything stays static from twenty seventeen to twenty twenty-eight. You know that that's yeah. A plus and this is concern. not. This is. This is also not calculating, you know, sustained three to four percent growth over the next, you know, few years, which we haven't seen in decades. Yeah, but you know what? What's funny to me, Russ, is that the first thirty trillion that we've ad- added on, you know, during Obama and whatever, we didn't care about all that. But it's that extra one trillion that's being added on as a result of the Trump tax reform plan. That's too much now. Oh, we have gone too far, you know, because I forgot to mention the pre-existing. Uh, debt that the uh, pre-existing increase in debt would have been of uh, you know one trillion less if we left things the way they are under the current law. There would be a thirty trillion dollar growth by twenty twenty eight, not a thirty one trillion dollar growth. So the thirty Correct. trillion that Pelosi has grown and thrown in there, that's okay. But that one trillion extra, oh, look out. Well, let's talk about the stuff that's going to hurt people in the states that we're from, Gene. So. Because it's People's actually Republic of New York, affects, yes. Yeah, and this affects everybody across the country. So our people listening down south, we, we have a conundrum here. So currently, big states like New York, California, they have very high state taxes. They tax property taxes through the roof. Um, but on your federal income tax return, people who live in these big Democratic states get to write off or you know claim to deduct, if you will, the, the money that they're paying to their state governments off of their federal income tax. Now – there are arguments on both sides. Shockingly, I've heard conservatives on the, the radio. Some argue that you know they should not be allowed to de- make those deductions in the big states that are charging those high taxes, and some saying that Trump is making a disaster by trying to get rid of those deductions because he's going to raise taxes on some individuals. So this is definitely a valid debate. And I, to be honest with you, I'm a little torn, but I'm leaning towards the side that would hurt me as a New Yorker. To be honest, Gene, I'm going to read you a quote from Andrew Cuomo. Cuomo, our Former, I like that better. Let's yeah, call him Cromer, Andrew Cromer, Cromer from now on. Cromer, Cromer, Cromer. Yeah, sorry. Got I, don't want him to, I don't want his last name ending in a vowel. He's a disgrace to all Italian-Americans, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, he is quoted as saying, New York is a high-tax state. Yes, that's a decision Iowa states have made, and that is how we finance our government. He's owning up to it. By his account, according to the New York Post, New York taxes are so high because, quote, we believe in providing social services and free college tuition, etc. So you know what? As much as I'm going to be hurting in my pocketbook in the People's Republic of New York, this is the tr- this is the consequence of voters' choices. You want to have all these things that you know Democrats say are so important for you to have. This is what you get. The federal government what- is not supposed to bail you out of your choices in your state. Yeah, Gene. I mean, exactly what you just said. If if Cuomo really believes, Cuomo, that, I love. If we're going to really do that. Does. Are we doing that Cuomo thing? We're going to do that from now on. No, I, I have no problem with. It. I just want to know. I mean, if him and his, his little sidekick in New York City, de Blasio, if they really believe in what he just said, then what's the problem? Pay for it. I mean, I don't understand what the problem is. Now, I've heard guys like Mark Levin say that, you know, raising taxes on anybody is a stupid thing to do at this point when we're promising tax cuts. But but the way I've heard it described, and you used a similar term, you know, people in Georgia, people in Florida, people in Texas, they're, they're basically subsidizing – places like New York State and California because we get to deduct our high state taxes off of our federal returns. So when we talk about paying our fair share, are we truly paying our fair share for the military and other federal government expenditures in places like New York and California? I would argue that we're not. Now, is that going to hurt me if we do this? It will. And it's going to force me and my family to make some tough decisions. Do we stay in a place like New York? Or do that's we try what to get it comes down to. And that's what it comes down to. You know, But the fact that we've elected officials here, our electorate in, in the People's Republic of New York, we've elected people who have, and doing so knowing that they're making this choice to spend big. And the reason why they're doing it is to broker political power, really. You know, big fat union contracts and, and, and things like that, free tuition, subsidizing education that you know, shouldn't be as high as it is because we have such high payrolls in the in the public sector and things like that. Because we live in a place that made those choices, we're going to have to make those choices about staying or not. But the bottom line here is losing these deductions that New Yorkers will lose will basically stop the rich and elite here in New York from being shielded by what these politicians are doing. You know, the, the 
curtain is now pulled back on New York thanks to these uh, the proposed tax reform here. And really, not only are we going to have to decide whether to stay here or not, Russ, but the 1% in New York are going to have to decide, decide whether they're going to stay in New York or not. Because now they've lost that protection the federal government has given them to allow them to have those massive deductions on property and whatnot. And they're going to have to go to a place where maybe they're not as taxed as much. And what that will do is that will ultimately hurt the lower classes in New York, the, the lower income people, because all those rich people that are subsidizing all those social programs that Democrats love to do and that they tax on, they're now going to start going away if those 1% elitists leave the state because the federal government has taken away that little bit of protection that kept them in the state. I love it, Gene. And I mean, it goes back to the brilliant uh the brilliancy of donald trump to be honest i mean it's kind of ironic in a way that you know the left usually talks about the one percent and they don't pay their fair share but you described it brilliantly yourself where you know by getting rid of these deductions who is it truly going to hit in the pants it's really going to hit the guy who has a million dollar mortgage deduction and and claims his state income tax past a certain amount um you know because his income is so high those are the guys it's really gonna hurt and, and in the grand scheme of things it'll hurt the rest of the state when those people leave i forgot what the stat was but there's like a one person in new jersey who i think pays five percent of the state's income tax himself like it's just some astonishing number and if that one person was to leave it would actually negatively affect the entire state it's like so ridiculous the way these big states have, have started to tax their they're they're rich, quote unquote. But I love it. Donald Trump is brilliant. In the Electoral College, guess who didn't vote for Donald Trump? These big dummy states like New York, New Jersey, California. So let them pay their fair share, hit them where it hurts, and hopefully some of these rich dummies who support left leaning Democrats will come to their senses, move to another state. The only thing I'm afraid of, Gene, is that some of these guys move to states like Texas and Florida and start ruining them. You know, you get too many lefties moving to those southern states. And that could entirely happen. The other thing I'm worried about, Russ, is all predicated upon the Senate getting their stuff together. Because right now, if you look at the Wall Street Journal uh, this, you know, earlier in the week, you'll see that the Senate bill actually has marginal tax rates that could top 100%, according to the story. Uh, <laughs> according to the Wall Street Journal, some high-income business owners could face marginal tax rates exceeding 100% under the Senate's tax bill, far beyond the listed rates in the Republican plan. Now, now explain, that, with, explain how that could even work. I don't even understand. You that. know what? I don't even know how that can work because I'm not subscribed to the Wall Street Journal. I can't get into the article. But, uh, <laughs> what, it, but what a marginal tax rate, what this would basically mean is that a, a business owner who earns $100, let's say, would, under certain circumstances, uh, presuming that they're correct in their interpretation of the plan, would require them to pay more than $100 in additional federal and state taxes. That's not, that, that's not America. This is all, I don't bring this up to talk about, you know, tax rates and to bore everybody at the end of the show. But what I do want people to understand is that this is a far from a done deal. We have to still get a conference bill this coming week and hopefully have it on the president's desk before the end of session. If we don't get that, this whole discussion has been for naught. Well, I think there's a pretty easy way to sell this, and I think that it would actually cause guys like Mark Levin's head to explode. But if, if – and I, I don't put it past Donald Trump if he, when he starts going out there to sell this thing to say, look, I want to make the rich – I agree with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. I know it's going to make people's head explode. Stay with me for a minute. I agree with Chuck and Nancy. I love how when he calls them that, by the way. I agree with Chuck and Nancy. <laughs> You know, I, I think the rich should pay their share fairly. You know, the Mike Bloombergs of the world and such. These deductions that we're talking about getting rid of or limiting, we're only going to do it once you pass a million dollars in most circumstances. And that's it. Then you still get, you know, you're, you're hurting the people that, who cares a damn if you're hurting them in some uh, cases, you know. Listen, I'm not a rich hater at all. But most of these rich guys seem to be voting Democrat and live in these big states like New York and New Jersey, California. F them. Take away their mortgage deduction, their property tax reduction, their income tax, state income tax deduction once you pass a million dollars or more. That way you keep the middle class uh, in the clear on this tax cut and, and you soak those other guys. And let's see how the Democrats defend against that one. I would love to see what Chuck and Nancy say about that one. It's an interesting idea. I, want, I, don't, think that, I don't think they have the uh, testicular fortitude. Because I don't think that Trump would call that bluff. I don't think he'll risk high-level donors on his end or on the Republican. I think he'll get a lot of blowback from, from his own party. 
but it would be a real gambit uh, to do that. You know, who could hours? argue it? I would. Here's my argument. A week out, you can't really do that. You can't do that a week out from getting the bill done because then you're setting yourself up a disaster if they call if they call you a bluff and then you don't have the votes on your own end to do that. It's a very tenuous position right now, President Trump. There aren't enough votes to go around for moves like that. Any word on McCain? Oh, I, I think he's in the hospital, isn't he? I, don't, I have no...